Hello and welcome back. In the previous tutorial, I explained how you can download and install JDK 10 on your Windows operating system. I also explained how you can set up the Java home directory in your environment and also how to set up the path parameter there with the environment of Windows. In this tutorial, let me show you how you can download and install Eclipse IDE on your Windows system. Now, the IDEs or the integrated development environments, they are really awesome softwares. They really helps the developer to manage the entire project easily, conveniently. In a real life project, you may expect that there could be hundreds of files. The source files are there. Along with the source files, there could be uh, external library utilities, the database connections, and many other things that you need to manage within a single hood. Now, managing all of these files in a folder manually is really going to be troublesome. Now, IDs are really great tool. They will help you to manage all these files within a single environment and you'll be able to manage the entire project and you'll be able to execute the entire project, debug the project easily within the environment. In that way, IDs are really helpful to the developers. There are many IDs out there for developing the Java programs, but I'm going to prefer Eclipse IDE because that's the industry standard. Uh, you can use NetBeans or IntelliJ IDEA, whatever you wish. That doesn't going to make any difference. But as far as this course is concerned, I'm going to use Eclipse IDE. So let me go ahead and show you how you can download and use Eclipse IDE on your Windows system. You can follow the same procedure for Mac as well. Okay, in order to download the Eclipse, you need to go to the Eclipse homepage, www.eclipse.org. That's the URL for Eclipse homepage. Hit the return key on your browser after typing that. And here it is. This is the homepage of Eclipse. Now on the top right corner, you can find the download button. Just hit on that download button. And in this page, you can see the download options there. Now, when I'm recording this video, it's Eclipse Oxygen version. It's just not going to make any difference if you are using some other version of Eclipse. Now, instead of hitting this download 64-bit button, I would recommend you to hit this download packages link. Now, this is going to give you several options and you could choose between 32 and 64 bits. So just hit on this download packages link instead of that download 64 bit. So I'm hitting on this link there and it's going to take me to the other page. Here you can see that there are different options with the Eclipse ID that you can choose. Now if you are interested of writing C and C++ program, you can download this particular Eclipse version. Now since we are interested of writing Java, I'm going to download this one, Eclipse ID for Java EE developers. EE means Enterprise Edition. Now on the right hand side, you can find that there are two different flavors available, 32-bit and 64-bit for Windows. So I'm just hitting on that 64-bit. And here in this page, you need to choose this one, this zip file. So I'm just hitting on this Eclipse Oxygen zip file and it's going to ask for the location in my computer and here we go i'll choose the youtube tutorial folder under my c drive that i created earlier now here inside of this folder i have created another folder there as you can see eclipse ide and i'm going inside of that and hitting the save button so that zip file is going to be saved here in this folder so the download has started and it's going to take a while depending upon your internet connection. So I'll pause this video and let the download be completed. When it's done, I'll get back. Okay, the download is complete and let's go inside the folder where we have saved that zip file. So I'm hitting that show in folder link and here it is. So now what you need to do is to extract this zip file. Please make a note of this. The icon here that you are seeing may be different on your computer. Since I have that WinRAR installed in my computer, that's why it's appearing like that. But if you do not have any RAR or zip utilities installed in your system, this icon may be a default zip icon of Windows. That's just a yellow icon. So you just need to right click on this. And in that case, if you do not have any RAR or ZIP utilities installed, you'll find extract all option here. Just hit on that. Okay, so the file will be extracted. Just don't double click on this and go inside. Okay, if you do not have any RAR or ZIP utilities, you may see that as 
default yellow icon and if you double click on that it will be opened and you can see the eclipse folder inside that now that's not going to work okay what you need to do is to extract this first so just right click and find extract all if you do not have any rar or zip utilities installed otherwise if you have these winrar kind of things there hit on this extract here so i'm hitting that it's going to extract that zip file and you can see that that eclipse folder is coming out of that zip file so it's going to take some time i'll pause the video and i'll get back once this is done okay it's done now go inside of this eclipse folder you'll find that eclipse.exe that's the file that will start the eclipse id on your system now you can create a shortcut of this eclipse.exe on your desktop just right click on that and send to desktop create shortcut that will create a shortcut on your desktop and for second and subsequent time you just need to use that shortcut in order to start your eclipse now before we could start eclipse i want you to do something more in the parent directory that means in this eclipse ide i'm going to create another folder that's the workspace folder you can create this workspace folder anywhere in your hard drive in a particular convenient location so i'll prefer to have it here now this workspace directory will be used by Eclipse in order to store all the projects that we are going to create from within the Eclipse. So here is the workspace. Now we go inside of that Eclipse and I'm double click on this Eclipse.exe to start the Eclipse. Now as soon as I will start this, Eclipse will ask for the workspace directory. I'll show this particular directory for the workspace of that Eclipse. Now the name of this workspace directory could be anything. I have given that as workspace, you could give it anything. So I'm starting the Eclipse right now, double clicking on that Eclipse.exe and here it is. You can see that it's starting. Now, when you are starting Eclipse for the first occasion, it may take some time. Okay, now you can see that it's asking for the workspace location. Now, this is the default workspace location that is suggested by the Eclipse. You can choose a different one and I'll do that. I'm hitting on that browse button, just hitting on this browse button and here we need to show that workspace folder that I just created so in this under the C drive it's YouTube tutorial and under that Eclipse IDE and under that this workspace folder is there so I'm selecting this hitting the OK and make sure that this checkbox is selected now if you do not select this checkbox on each startup it's going to ask you for the workspace location so if you select this now for the second and subsequent start Eclipse is going to use this particular location as workspace now later on if you need to change the workspace directory you can do that always there is option available within the Eclipse for this purpose to change the workspace directory so I'm hitting the launch button okay so this is the first look of Eclipse IDE you can see that right and it's actually displaying the welcome page there you can just close this welcome page and you'll get the entire environment visible on your desktop on the left hand pane you can see that this is the project explorer and whenever you create a project all the projects are going to be enlisted here you can have all the projects listed here under this project explorer now if this project explorer is not visible like this you can just go to window and show view and under that you can find that project explorer just hit on this and the project explorer will be visible again now you need to create a java project in order to write a java program here within eclipse before that what you need to do is to do a little bit configuration we need to show the jdk 10 to eclipse because eclipse is going to use jdk 10 for the compilation and the execution of java program so you need to do a little bit of configuration for that just go to window and this is only one time configuration and hit that preferences under windows just increase the width and height of this dialog box and here under this on the left hand pane you can select that Java expand that you'll find installed JREs here hit that link install JREs on the right hand pane you can see this okay now by default it has actually selected the JRE 10.0.1 but we want the JDK to be here 
because we want to develop and execute the programs. So what we need to do is to add the JDK folder here with Eclipse. So for that, what you need to do is to hit on this add button and select this standard VM. VM means the virtual machine. Hit the next button and here select, click on this directory button and find the Java folder or JDK 10 folder under your Java directory of program files which is there in the C drive. So I'm just going inside of the program files and then Java and under the Java I'm showing this JDK 10.0.1. Okay, that's the folder that you need to show to Eclipse. Just hit the OK button and that's it. Hit finish. Now select this JDK. Instead of this JRE, you need to select this JDK. Now apply and close. Hit this button and you are done. You are done associating the JDK 10 with Eclipse. Now you are ready to create a new Java project and you are ready to uh, compile and execute that project as well. Let me show you that. I'll just create a Java project and we'll show you how to compile and run a Java program in Eclipse. So just file, new and project. And under that you'll find the Java project. Okay. Now hit the next button and give a name to this project. I will just give first project. Now here you need to choose use default JRE currently JDK 10.0.1 by default it's going to be the first one but you need to hit the third radio button. Okay select that and then hit the next button and then finish. Just hit the finish button you are done. Okay, one more thing. On this dialog box, okay, you just select this remember my decision and hit that open perspective. What it is going to do is going to actually rearrange everything for your Java programs. Okay, you'll find the menu system and the shortcut tools according to the Java program. So just hit on that open perspective. So it's done. You can see that project, first project under the project explorer list and expand that you'll see the source folder that's src node under which we are going to create our files. So right click on that src and new and class. You need to create a class always in your Java project in order to execute a Java project. Okay, so the class and here it's going to ask you for the name of the class. So I'm going to give a name here. Leave that package empty right now unless and until we understand what is package, we are not going to give any package there. So just under the name, give hello, that's the name of my class and here make sure that this particular checkbox is selected, public static void main. It's going to write that main method implicitly. So after selecting that, hit the finish button and we are done. So under that SRC, you can see that it has created that hello.java under default package. Now what is default package? I'll explain that. Don't worry about that right now. And also don't bother about this entire code. I'll explain each of the lines of this code later on. Don't worry about that. But we are just interested of running the Java program within Eclipse. Okay, so I'm showing you that how to execute, compile and execute a Java program from within Eclipse. So that system.out.println and hello world this is going to print hello world into the console. Okay, now every statement in Java must be ended with a semicolon. So I have given that semicolon there, as you can see. And this is going to print that print ln is a method which is inside of this object out and th that out object is inside of this class library class system. So don't worry about all these jargons. I will explain each of them later on. But print ln is a function that prints something prints a string, double quoted string into the console. So that's it. So now if I execute this program, I'm going to get hello world printed into the console. Now in order to execute this project, just hit this small circular green button. Okay. Just hitting that will compile this project and it will execute this project as well. Or what you can do, you can just hit on this run and run, whatever you wish. So I'm hitting this shortcut on the toolbar and it's saying that it needed to save the file, so just select all and OK. 
and it will be compiled and you see that at the bottom hello world appeared I'll just increase the size here under the console tab you can see that hello world right that's the execution now if you have something wrong with your program say I have not given that semicolon intentionally just to show you that Eclipse is going to compile and it's going to display all the errors there so run and run now it's going to compile so it's saying that error exists in the required project so I'm canceling that so you see that there is a small red line appearing at there where the error is right now okay so I'm just giving the semicolon you can just hover the mouse here and you can see that syntax error uh, semicolon to complete block statement okay so that's how Eclipse is going to help you while you develop instantly you can find the errors you can find your mistake while you go on typing on Eclipse that's really helpful that that is going to help you to develop the code faster now th these things are not going to be there with your notepad like things so I'm running this again and hello world is there so that is how you can use Eclipse for your Java project I hope you have understood this and you can do that on your system now if you have successfully downloaded and install JDK 10 and also um, this Eclipse then please write complete setup in the comment section I want you to do that for me so that I could know how many of you have successfully done these things thank you for watching